three years ago, we did a story. I did a story with Ed on the Cayennes and the one that I was building at the time, which was originally supposed to be a support truck for the Keem Project Appalachian adventure that we do every year, Lee's big client trip. And so I had asked Lee, I was like, can I build a Cayenne to do a support truck for the trips? And he was like, yeah, well, you can, let's, let's do that. And so I was like, all right. So I went and got a Cayenne and started building this thing. And there were other people who were kind of, they piqued their interest about it. We were doing really good with it uh, in the beginning. It really started getting traction because the pandemic, we were still in lockdown, I believe. And really the only thing you could do was get out to the outdoors and, and there was a big popularity, a big trend of everybody getting into off-roading and, and going outdoors because that's all you could do. I did the video with Ed and it, it really started blowing up. Even to the point where after I did my blue one, people were like, oh, are you gonna build these? Are you gonna do that? And I was like, no, 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 no. This is just for fun. I've got so much other Porsche work. I've got so much other work with Lee that I, like, this is just supposed to be all out for fun. People kept asking, kept hounding me. And I was like, all right, we'll try it. We did a couple of them. And then people are like, oh, can you, you got to take this to market. You got to take this part to market. Do that. And it was, it's not where I wanted, where I really wanted to go. We were working with another suspension company who got shut down because of the, the pandemic. And they were out of Canada and all their stuff was built in Malaysia. And then Lee was like, why don't you go to motion control? And I was like, nobody's gonna wanna spend that kind of money on a three, four, at the time, Cayennes were three, $4,000. I originally got mine from Trailer Motorsport and uh, Branda and Branda and Reed. And I think it was, I think it was $3,100 is what I paid. And nobody cared about Cayennes. Nobody cared. I went to Moshe Control and I was like, hey, we were working with other suspension company. Uh, Motion Control does all the proprietary suspension for the Keem Project 911s. And Lee was like, talk to him. So I was talking to him and it's like, nobody's gonna spend this kind of money. And at the time it was gonna be around five grand or so for a setup. And so Motion Control was like, yeah, well, let's definitely look at doing this. So they came up to the shop and we took the Cayenne and we tore everything down. And we went through full droop, both within factory limits. And then we got some PowerFlex bushings from Forge Motorsport and put the PowerFlex stuff in. And we, we looked at both ranges with and without factory bushings and full compression, full droop, how much range was in the factory CV. Like we looked at all of this and they were able to engineer an entirely new setup from the ground up, both with OEM forks to their suspension bodies, their valving. And now we've been on it for four years at this point, different iterations. And we always improve and ended up changing the lower forks out to some really nice billet super strong lowers and other valving adjustments along the way. I sold a couple of those outside of doing a Cayenne for somebody and it was hit and miss because motion control is at a level to where you're not just gonna take that suspension out of the box and, and bolt it in. It takes setup to know because it's a proper unit and it takes proper setup and proper tuning to get these really where they need to be even with being an off-road suspension setup. So we went back and forth on trying to take it to market. And even how I did the bumper bars was kind of a nod to Lee and working with Lee for so many years now, because I think we're, on, we're going on eight years of working together. I didn't want to try to ride Lee's coattails at all. I wanted just to, as a nod to say, this has been a lot of fun. And then, everybody started doing tubular bumpers that way. And it was like, wait, I, this, this was, you know, Lee has a very, very specific way he wants his 911s to look. And I've worked years with him on getting that, how he wants it, doing exactly how he wants it. I'm not gonna copy, I just wanna emulate. I just want to make it to where it's like, 
thanks, man. This is, this is, this has been awesome. And then everybody started doing tubular bumpers. And so I felt, I felt kind of bad. It has created an entire community. There's a huge Facebook community group that I started two and a half years ago, I think. And it's now over 20,000 people and it, it's created a whole industry, you know, and, and to think being in this room three years ago that it's created this, this million dollar industry, not for me, but for other companies. And I love seeing what they're doing. I love seeing their growth. I love being able to follow and see what they've been able to take to market and add to these, this whole cayenne craze that started. For me, I was always busy enough with all the other work. I'm not a big online kind of guy. So we built a couple of them and still build a couple, but I, I really keep them around between three and five a year. That's really about about the limit. You know, we're, we've looked at some other avenues for selling some of the stuff that we, we do and, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what comes. But we started doing a lot of group rides. So going to Winrock, going to J19 up here in Talking Rock in Georgia, the firm down in Florida, Peaks to Shore, which is a North Carolina trip. We're doing the pilgrimage again in October this year, which is up in Vermont. I've got two Cayennes that we did that we run for Lee's um, client trips every year. And, you know, so we've been all the way out west and obviously we do our East Coast stuff every year. It has been a lot of fun. It has been challenging, but the Cayenne market, as far as the Cayenne itself, it was hot. It was super hot during the pandemic and for about a little while after, but it's, it's, it's softened a lot. You know, the, the, the stuff that I do is still, still at a premium and it's still, you know, we're, we're still enjoying it. We're still having fun, but Cayenne prices are back down to what they were. They might be a thousand dollars over what they were in 2018, 2017, but you know, it's, it's been, it's been a wild ride for sure. Now, three years later, we've done, we've built about 20, 25 of them, I would say. I think only one has sold because mainly everybody keeps them, you know, and that, that was one of my big things is I didn't want to, for a while there, you could go on the different auction sites and man, they were fetching, they were fetching big money. I was offered 90,000 for mine during the pandemic. I was like, no, it was like, I, I don't want to be married to it. You know, my my blue one was the one that everything was was based off of. It was it worked for me. I loved its quirks. They didn't bother me, but it's not something that I would have felt comfortable selling at 90 grand to somebody and then I'm married to it and they're calling me on a Saturday night like, "Hey, uh, it's like that's that's not what I want." You know, it it, it uh Again, it, the, the Cayennes weren't supposed to be what they became. They were supposed to be fun. I didn't have any interest in the beginning. Um, I did mine. I did my buddies so we could do support for the trips. But then we started to get, I, my family and I started getting more and more into off-road and doing more and more. And then I started doing, actually getting training, actually getting certifications, like, taking it up to the next level to be like, this is, this is actually a lot of fun. But then also realizing kind of early on that there's a lot of dangers that come along with this as well. So it was making sure that we did, you know, X, X training, X certifications, you know, getting what we can that is available out there. So during all this, I had other opportunities, other doors that, that opened. There was motion control, there was braid. We have our own wheel spec that we do with braid early on people are like can you fit this cayenne brake under this wheel and this wheel and i was like with the braids you can you can fit an 18 inch wheel over a 400 millimeter rotor with a braid it, it's it's close but you can do it and we develop really good relationships with these companies same with forge motorsport with their overland division same with um triple r which is laser over in the uk we even did hella stuff front runner of course because we we uh, did all their racks we did quite a bit with Eurowise. mike's first time ever going off road was with was with our group i think it was two years ago uh we took him to winrock and you know i've known mike a long time and 
I was like, this is a market I think you could do really well in because he's, he's got a real ability to be able to market and build stuff quick and get it to market. And he's, he's done really well and I'm really proud of him. And then there's, there's been other companies pop up along the way, like the stuff we do with Wilco for their spare tire carrier. We ended up meeting up with the guys at Sway and we're able to do quite a bit with Sway. Same with Otzi, you know, it's, it's, it's this little family run company and we use their spare tire racks and they have been a blessing. They've been great to deal with. There's been other opportunities, other doors that have opened along the way that there was no market three years ago. There was nobody to where now there are, I mean, I still have wheel companies reaching out like, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? You know, we're working with several different Porsche dealerships through Indigo about building it's our own line of stuff that's only available through Porsche dealerships. It's gone from non-existent to huge. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm not a business person. I'm just a guy that can paint and fab some cars. You know, that, that, that's, I know my place. So I'm, I'm really proud of seeing my friends and these other companies being able to grow. It's been, it's been crazy because it's been, there's been some butting heads over the, over the last couple years where, you know, other people, everybody wants to stick their hands in the pot. Did I expect this? No, I don't think anybody did. Not at all. I did a Cayenne for Nick Faldo, uh, sir, I'm sorry. Did a Cayenne for Sir Nick Faldo with Lee because Lee's doing um, a special car with him, um, one of his 911s, and Sir Nick had a Cayenne, and he was like, I wanna do something with it. And Lee was like, well, I, let me ask Bryson. So Lee's like, hey, you wanna do this uh, Cayenne for Faldo? And I was like, yeah, man, of course. I didn't really hear much about it after that. And then literally one day, Sir Nick Faldo walks in with his wife into the shop like it's just any other day, you know, in, the, in Canton, Georgia. He was just like, hey, I'm here to drop off my Cayenne. Super nice, super easy to deal with. Dropped off his Cayenne and we put it together. Ended up shipping it out right before Christmas that year. And on Christmas day, he texts me and sends me this video with him coming around his field in Montana, sliding the Cayenne and pulls up next to the camera and he was like, oh, thanks so much. I love it. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm like that's, that's really super cool. People send me, you know, spy shots every now and then half the time they don't even know it's his. And they're like, oh, this Cayenne's in Montana. I've learned over the years just to be respectful with people who have that kind of celebrity where I don't, I didn't even make a post. I don't I think I made one post about it. Lee did a, a safari for Patrick Dempsey and you know, it was, I uh, tried to not be a geek about it, you know, and, and Lee's taught me over the years, like just, just play it cool, just play it cool. And I was like, all right. So I don't even, people ask like, why don't you post? Why don't you do it? And I'm like, I've worked hard to get where I'm at and I love where I'm at and I'm not gonna jeopardize it. So in 2021, Ed reached out and was like, hey, uh, I wanna do a Cayenne for a Car Trek episode. And I was like, I don't know what your budget is, but all right. I had a little bit of reservation in the beginning because I was, I had a lot of people asking to do a Cayenne and I, I knew what the dollar amount that I had to get to do one. And I was like, I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. There were people who asked along the way, like, I don't wanna spend that much on suspension or I don't wanna spend that much on wheels. Can I do this? Can I do that? And I've learned over the years to say, to say no. And I was real hesitant about it, but I was like, yeah, let, let, let's give it a shot because I, di I didn't want to be associated as, as a, a budget Cayenne. But we ended, up, we ended up using Forge Motorsport lift on it, Forge Motorsport Overland lift on it, staying with the stock springs and suspension. We did a real easy light bar on it. We ended up going with a set of wheels and then some KO2 tires, painted it orange. What pushed me over the edge to say yes was I, I, I've got my oldest son, Ryder, um, who's was 14 at the time, I was like, would you be interested in sanding this thing down and taking it apart and doing all this? And then I had another young guy working for me, Alex, who's still with me. He was in high school and then Caden, I hired him from the local high school, but he was actually on our mountain bike team. So I was like, 
guys, I, I don't, we got to do this budget. So you got to do this. We got to do this quick. I'm not, I got to deal with, with, with Ed. So we got to knock this out over a weekend. I think it ended up being like two, three days. So we ended up paying it at RS Orange, did it over a weekend, put it back together, put all the stickers on it. Said, here you go, Ed, go do it. And he goes and does the Car Trek episode and ended up winning the episode, I guess, as you could win a Car Trek episode. But I think he really, he obviously really fell in love with it. And that also opened some other doors that's coming over the next several months. Car fires make for great videos, but very bad days for car owners. And I protect my cars from fire by having an element extinguisher in every one of them for every mile. I actually got my first one from Freddie a few years ago as we were shooting Car Trek 1, where a fire was a very real risk, but it's always important to be protected. Element fire extinguishers weigh less than a tenth of what a traditional fire extinguisher weighs, and they discharge five times longer. They also make no mess, and they never expire. So it's worth picking up a few to have around the garage, your house, and of course, in your car. They've got a special bundle offer right now during the month of May for our VinWiki viewers, but it's always a good time to buy a couple of these to keep you, your car, and your home safe. So check them out now at the link in the description below. Oh.